Hello and welcome to this session today where we're going to focus on CAD, Sketch and 1D all within the, the latest Hyperworks GUI. In this session we're going to focus on six key areas related to the topic of CAD, Sketch and 1D. We're going to focus to start with on leveraging CAD data. So this would be various different CAD formats where we can open, import or even drag and drop these various different CAD files into the GUI itself to begin building our finite element models. Next, we'll also look at the possibility of CAD parameterization, where we can leverage Hypeworks as well as Inspire to link those two programs together and utilize the, the combination of the two and actually parameterize the CAD to make updates with that geometry. Also the integrated CAD editing, we'll review that within the GUI, looking at the different options we have with direct editing to the CAD, all the same within that single GUI within Hyperworks. In the second half of the session, we'll also look at the intuitive 1D element generation. So looking at the cluster of tools that make it easy to create and edit those 1D elements. Following that, we'll look at fle flexible beam section creation. So look at how we can create uh, or define uh, beam sections from a, a standard section from a specific library that's already specified and available for you to choose within Hyperworks. And then also using the sketcher or the sketch tool to make custom sections depending on your requirements. And finally, we'll look at the, uh, the efficient use of conversion from 1D to 2D or 3D elements, allowing you to increase fidelity within your existing FE model and maybe we'll look, uh, look more in more detail at specific areas. So in this first half of the session, we're going to focus uh, on CAD and Sketch. So regarding leveraging CAD data, we can see here a list of all the different CAD formats that are supported within Hyperworks. So we've got a list from here from Katia, Creo, uh, IGIS, Inspire, Inventor, Step, SolidWorks, STL, Parasolid. As you can see, the, the list goes the list goes on. These formats are all supported within Hyperworks, and we can open, import, or drag and drop these files directly into the GUI to begin our creation of, of our finite element uh, models. Following on from this, we'll look at CAD parameterization and how we can utilize the variables that have been specified within Inspire and the sketches within Inspire directly coupled into Hyperworks, where through our preferences, what we can do is update these variables and they're automatically transferred through to that model that was created within Inspire. And finally, we'll review how we can use the sketcher uh, and the integrated CAD editing tools to make modifications to the existing CAD within the model. So let's move over and have a look inside the GUI. So let's begin with looking at the different options we have within Hyperworks to open geometry files. There are a few different ways we can do that. We can use the multifunction icon here and use open, or we can go to file, open geometry model. That will bring up this dialog, and then we can choose the, the geometry file itself. Note we have all the different types of file available as we saw in the slides. Alternatively, with the new Hyperworks GUI, we can actually drag and drop geometry files into the working area. So if you navigate to your file explorer, choose your file. So we have a parasolid file here. We also have a parameterized Inspire model. So I'm going to import that for this demonstration. So you can see I've just drag and dropped. It will give my geometry options. Here I can specify what type of units I want to use. So if we want to use the CAD units that the model was exported in, then we can do that. Or we can specify specific units that we want to work within. And we just click open. As you can see, that automatically brings in the model. And this model specifically is a parameterized model. So what we can do is update this model 
by changing the variables that have been specified in the Inspire model itself. Once we click on the variables icon, you'll see the variables manager appears in this dialog, which shows us all the different variables associated with the Inspire sketches that are built within this model. So in this model, we have parameterized sketches on both these back plates and these brace sections here. And these are all updated through the variables that have been specified. So if we begin to change these variables to increase the load capacity of this pull-up bar, you'll see the model begins to update. And what this is doing is automatically updating the geometry file as well as the model inside of Hyperworks itself. So you can see my first update has already been changed and I'll go down and just increase the size and dimensions of all the mounting system here to be able to increase the loading. So I'm going to update the whole size so we can put an increased bolt and then the offset from the edge as the current bolt hole location is very close to the edge of the plate we want to bring that in so we can put a washer underneath the bolt head and then increase the, the brace section as well. You see it takes a few seconds there to update the, the model, uh, the geometry model itself, and then to update the model inside of Hyperworks. So what you can see here is the powerful benefit of being able to update that model uh, directly within Hyperworks. Next, we can use the sketch tool to make modifications to the part itself. So what we have within the sketch ribbon here are all these various different tools, as you can see here, that allow us to, within Hyperworks, make modifications to a part. So in this example, I'm going to create a new sketch. Here I can choose whether I want to specify the sketch on a surface or a plane. In this instance, I'm going to use a surface and just specify the sketch onto the surface of one of these brace structures. Pressing create takes us directly to the sketch plane. And as I selected a surface, it automatically pulls in the outline of the, of the, of the surface itself as reference for your sketch. To start, what I'll do is convert that curve or the reference into a curve and then use the offset tool to offset this to create a hole or an outline of the hole, which I'm then going to remove material from to lighten the part itself and reduce mass. The offset tool has different features. I can choose chain selection or I can do individual selection and I can select the individual lines, specify the offset I want to achieve. Let's say 25 millimeters here, press enter and confirm the offset. So I can repeat the same function for these two models. Just specify again the 25 millimeters and again 25 millimeters here. Now you notice we are working in millimeters with Hyperworks being a unitless system. As long as if you're consistent, you'll get consistent results. But here we can actually specify specific uh, dimensions that we want to work within. And that's all available and changeable through preferences. So now we've got the three offsets we need, we need to trim the additional lines. We can do that using trim and select the lines we want to delete, leaving us with an outline of the pocket that we want to remove. Once we've trimmed them, another option we could do is just select the lines by doing a box select, hold control and continue our selection and we can delete the existing lines that, that are available here. This will leave us just with the outline of the hole that we want to pocket. We also have the option, if we select the lines, to add different constraints to the, the lines or the model itself or the, any parts of the sketch. So here we've got different options where we can fix. So in this instance, I'm just going to fix these sketches. We have like parallelization, options for horizontal, vertical alignment, coincidence, collinearity, equal dimensions, etc. So there's lots of different options here that you can to define your sketch. Also notice you have a key up here. 
whether your sketch is over constrained, fully defined or under defined, it all specifies uh, here and, and, and you can clearly see the difference between values. So if you have a, a black model, as I do now, the model is now fully defined, it cannot be changed dimensionally. Okay, the other thing what I'm going to do is just add some fillets. And what I can do is just specify the vertex at which I want to apply the fillet. Press this equals item uh, icon here. That means every uh, fillet I create will have an equal equal radius. And then I can specify the fillet. So I'm going to specify five millimeters here. I just press the play and you'll see that also removes the additional lines that I no longer need. Once the sketch is complete, we can use this sketch to create some geometry. So we just right click and hit the tick. That pulls us back to the model and we can see the sketch has been realized. We can then go to the geometry ribbon located here. Use the create tools in this part of the ribbon and then also the editing tools as well to create and edit geometry. We can go to the drag and spin, select the surface, drag the surface through all of the parts you want to remove material from and hit the tick. We can then use the boolean operation and subtract, select the targets and the tool to remove this solid volume from the other solid volumes. And we can hit subtract. Now you can see from making those modifications, from using the variables, as well as some of the sketch and geometry tools, we were able to modify the component all within Hyperworks. So for the second half of the session, we're going to focus on sketch and 1D. So with the 1D, we're going to look at the intuitive 1D element generation, where the tools are all clustered in a single ribbon for ease of access, ease of creation, and the ability to edit those 1D elements. So looking from beam sections, creating the elements themselves, editing those elements for, say, orientation and alignment, and then taking those elements and then inflating them from, uh, to, from the 1D to the 2D or 3D elements themselves. So we'll also focus on some more detail on the beam sections and the flexibility with creation of these. So whether we're going to focus on using standard sections from the library built in within Hyperworks, or we're going to create some custom sections using the sketcher tool now available. And finally, as I mentioned, we can inflate these 1D elements efficiently into 2D or 3D. So that's converting the 1D into 2D or 3D to increase the fidelity of your FE model. So let's have a look. Let's begin by dragging and drop the HM model directly into Hyperworks. As you can see, I've got a simplified fuselage model that I like to attach some beams along these the edges of the individual surfaces. So the first part of beam creation in Hyperworks is to define the beam sections. So I'm going to create the section by simply clicking on the plus. And I'm going to create two sections. The first section is going to be a T, T section. So I'm going to call that sec T. And I'm going to use a standard section. So from here, you can see we have a, a large selection of different sections that are predefined within Hyperworks. What I'm going to choose is a T section and then I'm going to specify the dimensions here. If you hover over any of these dimensions you'll see the actual shape of the section and the dimensions associated with that. So you can up those, update those directly. So I'm going to update these dimensions to define my beam section itself. So here for D, D1, dimension 1, I'm going to specify 20 millimetres, here 60 millimetres, and then define the thickness at 1 mil and 5 mil respectively. So you can see if I hover over here, you can see the dimensions that are associated to my beam section. So I can close that, and that defines my first beam section. So here you can see my T section, and if I want to edit that, I can just click on the on the beam section and the end in the entity editor I can make all my modifications here. So I'm going to define a second beam section and this time I'm going to do it uh, via the sketcher. So I'm going to create a custom section and generate that via sketch. 
So to do that, all I'd do is go to sketch, specify a new sketch. This time I'm going to specify a plane. I'm going to pick this plane and I'm going to hit create. And you can see we die default into the sketch plane and I can begin to create a, um, a cross section of the, uh, the beam section that I want to create. To begin my sketch, what I'm going to do is create some infinite lines just for reference when I create the model. So I create them, select them, right click and define them as infinite. I'm also going to select them again and, defi and, and define them as fixed so they stay at the origin of the, of the sketch itself. Next, I'm going to create a reference line. I'm going, to, I'm going to define that as construction if I select it. And this is purely for the creation of the section itself. I'm also going to set a dimension from that line at 40 millimeters. And again, at 10 millimeters. Next, I'm going to specify an arc. The idea here being that what I'm going to create is a hat section with a modified top, so a circular top, and a 45 degree uh, at the bottom of the hat section itself. So I created the arc, and I can go ahead and create the rest of the section itself. So 45 degrees, and then a lower section for rivets to attach to the other parts of the component itself. Next, I can offset this using the chain selection. I can easily select all of the lines and specify the offset at two millimeters. And then I want to finish the uh, connection between the offset and the original line. Next, what I want to do is specify um, a mirror. So I want to mirror the rest of this sketch over to the other side. So I just go into the mirror tool, select all of the curves by box selection and specify the axis at which the mirror will occur at. I just click the tick. So you can see the intuitive controls here that make it easy to create different parts of the, of the sketch itself. Now all I want to do is specify some dimensions. So I can specify this lower point here at five millimeters. this length here at 10 millimeters, and then specify the angle as well, at 45 degrees or 135. So now you can see that the, the whole model is constrained. If I want to specify this as a reference dimension, all I would do is right click on the dimension and specify as reference. And maybe I want to change that to see uh, just to specify the width of the component instead. If I wanted to add a variable, I can do that. Specify that as the width. And specify this one here as the height. If I wanted to create a new variable, so for example here, I could create a new variable, call that base. And if I wanted this dimension here to be twice the base, all I would do is create that again. So I could call this base uh, two, whatever name suits. Delete the dimension here and specify base times two. So very referencing the other variable and creating the new variable. So basically I can create an expression. If you want to view your variables, again, you can press the variable icon here and you can see all the different variables associated with the sketch. So this is how you can utilize the sketcher mode to create a beam section and also parameterize that section as well if, if you wanted to. To exit, just right click and swipe to the left or press escape. Now the sketch is complete, I can go ahead and create my custom bean section. So I go to the plus, give that a name. Go to the config now and specify solid. 
which allows me to then specify my custom beam section. And that's now automatically created. The next thing to do is create the beam elements. So I can do that using stiffener mesh. Untick three lines, make a selection of all the lines in the geometry, confirm your config and properties, and then go ahead and specify the T section. At the moment, all I have done is applied that, uh, the same section to the whole model. And the reason why I've done that is purely so I can show you how to organize these and change the beam sections really easily. So I've just changed, turned the visualization on of the beams and the 2D mesh. And you can see that the beams are actually orientated incorrectly. We can use edit beams and go to orient, select the elements, and then orientate them relative to this coordinate system. And then specify the vector based off that coordinate system to specify the orientation. You'll see that the elements uh, have now orientated themselves correctly with regards to the beam section. They're just offset incorrectly. So again, I can go into edit, offset this time, select the beam sections, uh, select sifter on shell elements, and then specify the location. And you can see that's now updated the elements correctly. Now, the reason why I have orientated them relative to that cylindrical coordinate system is so I can make a selection uh, quite quickly and move elements into different components. I can do that through beam mesh, update beams, and use the organize function here. Go ahead and select the beam elements by config. And now we're going to specify the local coordinate system that I orientated the beam elements to. And the reason I did that is so I can now separate these elements into different components based on their X, T and Y axis orientation. This is just one way to move elements into different locations uh, or different components quickly. So for the Z axis here, I just want to change my selection to stringers. So everything orientated on the Z axis will be into the stringers component and the others other axes will be in the frame component. And I just want to change that deviation to 60. So I capture uh, everything within the model. I press apply. So now you can see that the elements have been uh, shifted into the different components. And now I'm going to update to the new beam section for the frame. So anything here, him, the blue component here will be updated. To do this, I need to duplicate the property that was automatically generated when we created the beam elements. Call this sec custom as it's related to the, sec, uh, the cross section, the custom cross section. I can also rename this one if I like to sec T, so I know it's the property for the T section. Go back to the uh, custom section, define the beam section as the custom section this time. Then we can go ahead and select the component. So it'll be the frame blue component here. Then press E on the keyboard to select the elements. Right click, edit elements. And this will allow you to be able to assign the property to the elements directly. So we choose the custom section and press OK and press close. You can see now the beam section has been updated for the frame component. And we just need to orient the beams into the correct orientation and offset. So by default, we've clicked into offset because that's the previous tool we we're in. So we just go to orient first and orient normal to the shells. So now in the correct orientation, we just need to change the offset. So jump back to the offset tool. Again, normal and just put them in the correct position with the correct offset. So that's the elements now in the correct position and the correct orientation as we'd expect. Another tool we have to check the elements are orientated correctly is this query tool. We can select the elements by config, so the beam elements. And then this tool allows us to plot uh, area, 
moments of inertia, and also uh, stiffness through the different options here. And these can be a contour or they can be a vector plot. The final part of this demonstration is to show you how we can inflate the 1D elements to 2D or 3D using this inflate tool. To change it to 2D, we would click on the 2D icon here. Choose the elements we want to inflate. So I'll just select six elements here just to show you. We can inflate that just to a surface by having this tick box checked or untick it. And we can create some, uh, some mesh at the same time as creating the surface. So let's apply a 10 millimeter mesh. We just press play. The thickness is automatically mapped to the model. And you can see if I zoom in here and hide some of these elements, if I escape the tool, select elements and hide the 1D elements, the 2D elements have automatically been created. Similarly, if I want to create 3D elements, I can click to the 3D part of the inflate tool, select my six elements. So again, I'll select these six and I just press the play. Again, if I zoom in and hide the elements, you can see below that we now have the 3D geometry. And just for reference, if I hide some of these elements, you'll see there's nothing there. We haven't inflated this area yet. So that just gives you the two options that are available. Creating 3D geometry from your 1D elements or creating 2D geometry and mesh from your 1D element. The advantage of doing this is you can add fidelity to your model directly from your existing 1D elements. For a recap of this Hyperwork session focused on CAD, Sketch and 1D, we've shown you how we can leverage CAD data, whether that be existing or legacy formats, and how we can open these in multiple different ways, including dragging, dragging and dropping directly into the GUI. We've also showed you the powerful CAD parameterization that we can create using variables and also using Inspire models directly edited within Hyperworks. We've also shown the integrated CAD editing, whether that be a combination of the sketch and geometry tools from those specific ribbons to actually edit directly within the GUI. Focusing on the 1D side, we've shown you the 1D element creation tools, uh, whether that be from the beam sections, uh, the edit, the orientation tools, and also inflate. We have the flexibility to create beam sections from a standard section library built in within Hyperworks, or we can create custom sketches to define those sections as well. And we have efficient processes in place to convert 1D to 2D or 3D elements, allowing you to increase the fidelity of your existing FE model.